Hey there, I'm Steve, and welcome to Jamson Entertainment. And welcome to the conversation. Just before we get started, with, there are many ways you can help. You can like and subscribe so you never miss a conversation. But most importantly, please share this video. Get the word out there to the community. We can talk about all the things that we love. Today on Throwback Thursday, we're looking at A Few Good Men, a military slash court movie. I haven't seen a whole lot of court movies, but out of the few that I have seen, this is my absolute favorite. And this movie is jam-packed with stars. You have Tom Cruise, Demi Moore, Kevin Pollock, Kiefer Sutherland, and Jack Nicholson. This is one of Jack Nicholson's most iconic roles. All for that one iconic line, YOU CAN'T HANDLE THE TRUTH! Now, I don't know why, but for whatever reason, even though I know this came to theaters in the 90s, this always feels like a TV movie to me. I don't know why. I think maybe because some of the way that it's shot, maybe it doesn't have the highest of budgets. Of course, it doesn't really need that high of a budget. There's really only three locations. The other reason why why this feels like a TV movie is the soundtrack. They only use a real orchestra two or three times at the movie. Definitely at the end of the movie. Other than that, it's all synthesized. I, I don't know why. It just seems like a 90s TV movie. Not that there's anything wrong with that. The plot of the movie is Private Santiago is a Marine down in Guantanamo Bay. He's not a good Marine in the sense that he can't keep up in his training. He's always complaining and he's always going outside of the chain of command. This does not seem it well with Jack Nicholson's character Colonel Jessup and it's only reached his attention because Santiago is writing letters way outside of the chain of command. One of them is to the NCIS and in that letter he talks about a fence line shooting which would be the border between the American base and Cuba. You're not supposed to fire upon the enemy unless engaged first and Colonel Jessup reads that letter from Santiago to the NCIS. He reads in there that, he, that Santiago wants to transfer an everything and he's not pleased with Guantanamo Bay. Instead of just getting rid of a what Jessup and the other high up officers would probably see Santiago as a problem marine and just transfer him like he wants, Jessup sees it as his duty to train Santiago to be a better Marine. And that leads to what's called a Code Red. Code Red, as they describe in the movie, is the Marines dealing with a problem Marine. And when I say Marines, I mean same rank or only like a rank above Marines. So privates and other corporal that are within the platoon. A good example that where they actually, well, they show this Code Red, but a good example of a Code Red would be watching Full Metal Jacket. This Code Red, Private Downing and Corporal Dawson go in and they duct tape his hands and feet and they stuff a rag down his throat. You learn later on that Santiago has a medical condition and with the rag shoved down his throat it causes a medical condition that instead of burning oxygen he's burning sugar. It's explained better in the movie. When that happens you can die. Tom Cruise's character gets brought in because he's going to represent Private Downing and Corporal Dawson. Kevin Pollock is in there simply as an administrator. So he has no legal responsibilities there whatsoever. It's kind of a thing that he says a, a couple times in the movie, and it's a little funny. Demi Moore's character is Commander Galloway, and she's really just there to give the information over to Tom Cruise's character, Lieutenant Caffey. But she sees a real case there, and Caffey's known for just bleeding everything down outside of court. But she really wants him to fight for it. And the rest of the movie is him being convinced and actually fighting for Private Downing and Corporal Dawson. And it's a fantastic movie. It has some of the best dialogue you'll ever hear. And it's written by the great... Aaron Sorkin. He is a script writer for film and TV, and I don't know why I never caught this before watching the opening credits. A Few Good Men was a play. I currently only have it on DVD. I would like to upgrade it to Blu-ray, even 4K if there's a 4K version available, and that's how I recommend that you watch it. You see it in the best quality possible. Those are my thoughts on A Few Good Men. Let me know your thoughts in the comments below. Next week, there will not be a review because I will be on vacation up at my family cabin and there I'll be reviewing the other Dirty Harry movies. If you recall, a while back I reviewed The Deadpool and at the time when I watched it I didn't realize it was the I'm pretty sure it's the fourth movie in the Dirty Harry series. So I'm, I'm going to watch them backwards and I'm going to review them while I'm on vacation and also I'm relatively certain I have up at my family cabin the Lethal Weapon series. So I'm going to review that as 
as well in between the other Dirty Harry movies. If you like what you saw, like it. If you think other people will like it, share it. If you really liked it, hit the subscribe button. Thank you for watching and live your imagination.